and here's where things take a turn for the weird. It's our first Sega game on a Nintendo console. Of course, Sega has their own console. Several of them, in fact. The SG-1000 released the same day as the Famicom. At this point, the Mark III had been out for almost two years, and they're only about a year out from their 16-bit console, the Mega Drive. The reason for this is back in the 1980s, these companies seemed to keep their hardware manufacturing divisions and their software divisions at arm's reach. Ports of Nintendo games were being released on Coleco and Atari machines after the Famicom was released, for example. Of course, by 1987, Nintendo had locked that down. But Sega was still handing off their games to other companies to make ports. And that's why Sunsoft, Tengen, and Asmic would create ports of Sega games to be released on Nintendo consoles. And speaking of Tengen, this is not the port of Fantasy Zone that was released in the US. For some of these games, Tengen would use Sunsoft's and Asmic's ports, but for Fantasy Zone, they redid the port entirely. Fantasy Zone started out as an arcade game, and it was a pretty big hit for Sega. The story of the game is that in the future, all the universe's currency is standardized. But suddenly, an economic depression hits, and economists determine that it's due to aliens stealing all the money. The aliens are hiding out in their fortress in the Fantasy Zone, so Galactic Agent Opa Opa is sent in to stop them. That is really the story, and it's a reference to current events in Japan in the mid-80s. Of course, when the bubble economy popped, Japan didn't have Opa Opa to send in. In terms of gameplay, Fantasy Zone is a free-roaming side-scrolling shoot-'em-up. That means you can move back and forth through the stage as much as you like. Your goal on every level is to take out all of the enemy generators. Large structures that spit out bad guys every once in a while. Those enemy generators can take a lot of hits. Once you take out all of them, the screen fades and you get to fight a boss. And the bosses in Fantasy Zone are great. I feel pretty good saying that they are the best bosses that we've seen in a Famicom game so far. They've got a cute style, they're big, and they have distinctive patterns. They're fun to fight. Opa Opa starts out with two weapons. Some twin bullets that fire straight ahead, and a bomb that can be dropped. The bomb is actually not that useful. There aren't a lot of ground targets in Fantasy Zone. Usually you just get lucky and it intercepts somebody who's flying below you. A lot of the enemies drop coins. So you collect those to build up your cash, and around the beginning of a stage you'll see this balloon. Running into it gets you into the shop. Now I actually think that most of the power-ups in Fantasy Zone aren't worth it. The guns all have a time limit from the points that you purchase them, and the good bombs are ones that have one use every time you buy it. And prices always go up on items that you've purchased. So I would avoid depending on any of those things. The important thing to get in the shop are extra lives and engines to make your ship go faster. To go faster, you can get the big wings or one of the engines. Those are reflected on Opa Opa as you fly around, too. I'd get the small engine. That speed feels about right to me. I don't think it's worth saving up for the bigger ones. For the weapons, the wave shot shoots a wave in front of you. It's wider, but it's also only as strong as your regular shot. The laser concentrates your fire, and it can really cut through some of those tougher enemies. But if you really want to do some damage, get the 7-way gun. Rapid firing that will clear out a level pretty quickly. For the bombs, the twin bomb just lets you fire two bombs. And the fire bomb is dropped like your regular bomb, only has a bigger explosion. The smart bombs destroy everything on the screen. Useful, but not something I'd go out of my way for. The 16-ton weight is the bomb that you really want. It destroys anything that it lands on, and can even cut through bosses pretty quickly. Naturally, you lose everything when you die except your money. Progress through the level is retained, though, including damage that you've done to the enemy generators. And sometimes the shop balloon will appear after you die, so you could always pop in to get another engine. 
Fantasy Zone may look cute, but it can be a pretty cruel game too. When you change directions, you have a tendency to be really close to the edge of the screen, and enemies can pop in right on top of you. Those bullets can also get to be pretty fast. Yeah, it's not too hard to beat the first stage, but by the time you're at the third, you're going to be having a tough time. And there's eight stages total in this version. My biggest complaint about Fantasy Zone is that there's no continues. It's a very challenging game, and it really could have used something to let players pick up where they left off. I wound up getting stuck trying to get the rhythm down on the level 3 boss. It's not that hard, it just takes a lot of precision, and Opa Opa dies with one hit. I like Fantasy Zone a lot. In fact, I have five different ports of Fantasy Zone. And between all of them, the Famicom port's the one I'm least likely to go back to. Not because it's a bad port. In fact, I'd say it's a really solid port of a good game. It's just the Master System is more colorful, the PC Engine is closer to the arcade original, the Sega Ages port has more levels and options, and I've got two different ways to play the arcade original if I really want to. But if I didn't have those, I'd be pretty happy with the Famicom port. So if I'm playing Famicom Fantasy Zone, I'll go with the unique sequel that they made for the system.